Um, I'm Evgeny. Um, I guess many of you already know about Fluence. Actually, it may be just, you know, very obvious uh, short talk. But what you don't may not know is uh, we launched Token two days ago in the DAO. And what's uh, the most exciting about it is uh, we have airdrop to developers. And we tried to include actually a PL organization to it. Uh, but we're receiving uh, a lot of hate uh, lately from people who cannot claim because the their public keys were not published on the GitHub. And so the rule was uh, you, you should be a contributor to Web3 repos in the last year and uh, your keys should be published on GitHub. It's like your username.keys on a GitHub. If it's there, you probably include it. So like uh, check it. We have nice trustless way to claim their drop instead of using oracles and stuff. Um, Fluence, three things, cloudless stack, compute marketplace, DAO. Um, um, basically, we are trying to optimize for professional compute providers. A lot of them coming from storage providers of Falcoin. They have excessive CPU capacity um, and we allow them to monetize that. Uh, by default, uh, customers pay in, in, in uh, stable coins um, and providers can also like give access to other services. Like in cloud, you have um, functions and then you have like additional you know, all kinds of services that these functions can call. Um, like Fluence is, is a kind of Amazon Lambda analogy, right? But And, and then every provider can um, give access to different uh, managed services that um, um, developers can use when they uh, deploy to their uh, resources. Um, we account um, capacity in compute units. It's one physical core, four gigabytes of RAM, 10 gigabytes of disk. Uh, so basically, um, providers uh, allocate this compute units of their servers. Providers run a lot of servers. Um, and um, um, yeah, so like mainly we interested in providers who run servers in data centers with like racks and it's like really reliable, well-connected uh, hardware. Um, we have the thing called proof capacity. Uh, it's kind of the, uh, you know, uh, analogy to proof, proof space time in Falcoin, but for compute. So uh, providers have to run RandomX algo to prove that their compute units are uh, available and connected so they can uh, load them with work, uh, with this artificial work uh, to get token rewards. And uh, they also stake tokens to participate in this. Um, and um, this way we can you know, be sure that this capacity that was un advertised on Marketplace really exists and available right now. So if a customer comes, they can use it immediately. Uh, so when customer wants to use the, this uh, capacity, this unit is going to be switched to run customer jobs and this stake, token stake allocated with uh, compute unit going to be serving as a security deposit that uh, compute job going to be executed correctly. Um, yeah, so basically providers have this partially resources doing prof capacity, partially uh, doing jobs. Um, and rewards are vested. Uh, I think in Falcoin they also vested over time. So basically, to ensure uh, that this capacity stays connected, um, because if they uh, shut it down, then they will not get um, unvested rewards. Uh, the second thing is is a cloudless stack. It's this we started calling it cloudless stack just recently. It's we thought it's a great um, term because basically it's uh, about running code cross cloud, cross servers, cross uh, distributed networks. Um, so we define cloudless function as a function, like a piece of, piece of code that you run on the distributed network of uh, nodes, peers, uh, providers, whatever. We have this um, protocol called Aqua. Actually, I think right now in the other room in lip 2 p Bernard, my colleague is talking about Aqua <laughs> and he has much more technical talk. And here I just wanted to quickly uh, go through all of it uh, before I touch IPC. Um, so, um, basically, you know, many people in PL actually already know, um, uh, what, what, uh, how, how it all works. Uh, it's a distributed code execution without central coordination. So we can basically express any kind of distributed systems, network algorithms in that. Uh, and we think it's, uh, it's very nice and convenient. Um, and it's plugs with, um, um, external services. So like you can develop the cloudless function uh, that goes to the first node and triggers some some compute execution there, then goes to the next node, 
access some storage from IPFS there, goes to the third node uh, in, in the fourth and, you know, asks them to calculate some average on top of previous data and agree on that, for example. So it's basically like um, orchestration of the execution across distributed uh, network and services. Um, yeah, and it uh, has uh, the verification built in. So every next node in the algorithm um, uh, validates the um, trace of previous um, execution steps, uh, validates that there was the right nodes executing it, there were, they were executing in the right order, and so on and so forth. Um, and you can do all kinds of such stuff with that. Uh, load balancing, consensus, replication, like uh, basically a lot of things that you have in the cloud as a services can be uh, here written as libraries of this uh, Aqua language and, and as cloud functions. Uh, yeah, so Marketplace looks like that. Um, and uh, yeah, and finally, so Marketplace is like, this is all war of chain, right? So, but providers register on Fluence chain, which is run on IPC, and um, uh, they register all resources there and all the payments and settlement of payments happens on this chain. Um, the proof verification also happens on this chain. Uh, so we need a lot of scalability and performance um, and we need a lot of um, customizability. That's why we chose IPC. Uh, we also want to be, of course, close to Filecoin data because uh, we want to uh, finally run um, a compute on uh, Filecoin. Um, yeah, this is how basically like Fluence Chain has marketplace, has proofs of compute, that has Fluence token. We use an USDC as a, as a payment token. We're going to connect fiat gateways right uh, to the chain itself. And um, but the overall system looks like that. So we have uh, Ethereum, um, the DAO and the Fluence token minted on Ethereum. And then the, their utilities actually happens on IPC chain. So we bridge in um, Ethereum, like token from Ethereum to IPC. The bridge happens via Filecoin. We are using Axelar uh, bridge for it. And basically we need to be able to bridge FLT and USDC this way. Um, the IPC chain is managed on the Filecoin. So there are validators who are also same companies who run compute providers on Fluence Network. It's currently POA. Uh, we're gonna switch to proof of stake. Um, yeah, I think I have a slide on it. Yeah, so basically, uh, uh, currently, it's all permissioned, actually, because it, we are a little bit scared about launching it in permissionless mode from day one, uh, but it will be like have progressive decentralization. Um, so um, so we're going to move from POA to, PO, uh, to proof of stake. Uh, we also want to use um, a lot of features that IPC provides, you know, to um, play with withdrawal windows to make uh, faster withdrawals for small um, um, small amounts and, you know, longer withdrawals for um, bigger amounts, um, stuff like that. Um, we are, yeah, um, also one thing that we also add in uh, soon is we need on IPC chain, we need Fluence token price and it should come from some Oracle. We probably would put it into block generation. So, um, uh, like it's not yet done, but you know, uh, it, it seems like it's uh, totally possible with IPC. So pretty excited about that. Um, our our proof of capacity uh, works as a random X binary sitting next to IPC node. So IPC allows us to do this custom syscalls and um, um, execute it uh, this way. And we think that. Um, you know, for the future, like we like IPC, this kind of nested structure that it allows to do with all the subnets. So, because if we have more providers or we will need more proofs per time period, it means that the amount of proofs, like amount of transaction, like quickly grows because we, we are generating the proofs of capacity for every compute unit um, several times per day right now, but maybe we'll do like much more. and. Compute unit is one core, so it like one server basically has like hundred ish. Like it depends on CPU, but uh, like forty for, uh, from you know sixty to one hundred twenty ish uh, compute units. It means that um, we have this amount of transactions per server um, per period of uh, proof generation. 
Um, so with scale, we think that maybe we will do um, the scale that way that every provider would basically um, run their own um, IPC subnet that would be anchored to parent IPC, Fluence IPC subnet. And these subnets will be validated by some general set of validators. So um, providers cannot uh, cheat with, um, with their own uh, sub chain. Um, so this basically gives us endless uh, scalability this way, uh, and um, this is this is pretty nice. Um, yeah, I think that's that's actually it. Um, I thought if there are gonna be any questions on how it all works, I I may answer this, but that that was pretty short. Um, yeah. Actually, like this says. We are launching it right now. So, like, we announced we announced the the launch of the mainnet two days ago, uh, but it goes live like in 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 two weeks actually. So it's it's all on the testnet still, um, and um, but you know it's pretty much close to be ready. All right then, thank you guys. Mm -hmm.